Well, hello there. This is new. I haven't done a video where I talk, unless you count all my bad voice acting for animatic videos. I decided to try my hand in something different, but still on brand. With 2019 just ending, there was this big trend of showing your decade of art, or the classic redrawing of old art. I personally have been a huge fan of this trend for a long while now. On my bookshelf, I have multiple shelves dedicated to old folders and sketch pads filled with every single thing I have ever drawn traditionally. I have never thrown out anything. Not even the doodles I drew on the side of my high school math handout. I love to get nostalgic and go through all the old art I have saved. More than once, I have also redrawn some old drawings I feel inspired by. But the biggest thing about my old art is my old characters. I drew my characters way more than anything else. I had this crazy comic about them that had a story that was incredibly long and impossible to follow. It also had so many characters. So many. As much as these characters have stayed with me, there was a lot about their design that bothers me today. When I designed them, I had no idea what I was doing. Not only did I not have any understanding of anatomy yet, but I also didn't understand how to make a memorable character. Now I'm here years later, somehow with an animation BFA, and I've gone back and redesigned a couple of my favorite and most memorable OCs from when I was 14. So the basic story before we jump into this, all these characters live in modern day Japan, because I was a weeaboo. The catch was that there are these animal people from another dimension who are coming to our dimension to find something that can save their dimension from collapsing. The animal people all have superpowers, and it is also a fantasy type world. They can transform between human and animal form, kind of like a magical girl. The big thing that has bugged me recently is how even though their animal forms are supposed to be fantasy themed, they are all wearing just a shirt, pants, or skirt combo. So to get them to look actually fantasy, I use D&D classes as a basic idea as to what these characters would dress like based on personality and fighting style. So to start us off, we're gonna look at the main character of my old series. You'll notice that all these characters have Japanese names but they were just words that had to do with their powers that I Google translated. Anyway, <laughs> so Kumori was the main character of this series. He kind of finds himself roped into this whole plot by accident and then ends up being the most important character of the whole thing. He had a past where he was a bad guy at one point uh, and then he lost his memory, so now he's a good guy. Uh, but it's a whole thing where he... Oh, Siri. <laughs> Siri just turned on. Well, that's wild. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a whole theme of him fighting with his memories of being the evil person and trying to be good. Kumori's personality was kind of just your average shonen protagonist, really. The cool guy who kicked butt and was sassy and also got all the ladies, you know, shonen protagonist. His animal was a fox. His ability was controlling darkness, which I actually had some pretty cool ideas for when I created him. It included things like being able to walk in shadows and freeze people by freezing their shadows and creating giant black hole explosions. Because of the uncontrollable nature of his powers and the fact that he used to be a bad guy, I decided to base his outfit on a sorcerer. Someone who has raw magic and uncontrollable, unexplainable powers. For every character, I have already drawn a basic body shape in a pose that kind of represents their personality and also can show them using their powers. First thing I did was redesign his hair. 
His original hairstyle was completely crazy and super anime and didn't make sense, defied gravity even. I don't know what that weird bulge thing was. I don't know what I was doing. I've actually redrawn these characters before, but never this much into their outfits before. So I had a basic understanding of how I wanted to draw his hair this time. I've given him more of a slick back hairstyle, but something that's still kind of laid back and cool. Next, I started designing the outfit. Based on some of the sorcerer drawings I found, you know, they all have these big cloaked hoods and I figured that would be a good way to start. So I gave him mm, this multi-layered hood thing going on. Next, I drew in where his ear and tail would go because in this form, they all have their animal parts. A lot of fantasy characters have this long middle cloak part and then they have either like a tail in their outfit or just like a longer cloak thing. I gave him the front cloak bit and belt so he can hold it all together. I then decided to give him gloves. It seemed to fit him more than having bare hands, especially if he's controlling dark stuff. I don't know if he wants to be directly touching a ball of dark matter. I then gave him kind of this half cape thing. Some sorcerers have a whole cloak going on, but since he is super active and fighting, I didn't think a longer cloak would make sense for him since he would be running around a lot. I then designed some boots, kind of extremely based off of one of the sorcerer drawings I was looking at. It's got some buckles and a bit of a flap going on. I kind of sketched in just where the placement for his dark energy ball would be. It's, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> My sketches get a bit messy but it, it makes sense to me. I then ended by giving him two side parts of his cloak thing. It didn't make sense to have nothing there. It looked kind of empty uh, so I figured he'd have a few more draperies going on. Okay so I'm gonna line art this and then we're gonna come back to coloring. So I blocked in the character the random color that I'm most likely not going to be using on this character. I already drew the basic shadow blob that he is holding. So for colors, at first I was gonna color pick, but it didn't make any sense because the references I was using for him were all drawn with paper and colored pencils. So color picking was difficult. And then, you know, went back to kind of how I've been drawing him lately. He was always more of an Asian inspired character. Even though all these characters have Japanese names, they're not all Japanese or Asian of any kind. I was just a big weeaboo and really wanted everything to be Japanese. So I gave him kind of like a pale skin color. I had a phase where he had tanner skin and was much more darker skinned. But thinking about it now, the lighter skin made more sense, especially for his whole evil thing. He was kind of ruthless and terrible. And having him being a pale ghostly color made a bit more sense than him being a darker tan color. Next, his hair is always gonna be black. The hair colors, I didn't change completely. They're always the same basic color that they were to begin with. The only thing I really did was desaturate some of them or give a little bit of a flair to some of them more than they had before. Stuff that didn't destroy my eyes to look at. I have extremely sensitive eyes, so really bright colors bother me. That pink that I filled him in with was kind of hard to look at after a while. So I colored his hair in and his eyebrows and his ears and tail. All of the animal components will match their hair color. Some characters I had weren't matching, but it now looks a little off to me. So I've made them all be the same color as their hair. So now I actually started to color pick a little and match some of the colors to each other. I was gonna match his clothes to the image reference I had, uh, but seeing as he needed darker colors to kind of fit his whole aesthetic, I decided to then 
match it closer to the inside of his ears. So I gave him this kind of brown gray color for his pants and his shirt. I then wanted to keep his black clothing theme and I picked a little bit of a darker gray black color than his hair to start filling out his cloak. And then after I looked at a reference of other sorcerers, I decided his whole thing was just gonna be black. So then I started to color his gloves and boots and accessory parts in. I was gonna go darker at first, but they were kind of hard to see against the black and a bit too saturated as well. So I went a little lighter. I again picked the color off of the ears, trying to keep them all within the same family of brown. When picking colors, I like to keep it minimalist. I don't want to overboard the character with way too many colors going on, especially way too many contrasting colors. It's good to have maybe one color that pops, but if the whole thing is completely contrasted, it becomes impossible to look at. This could be a personal thing, mainly because my eyes are so sensitive, so I like having muted colors and then maybe one thing that pops out. But I find if you apply this, whether your eyes are sensitive or not, it'll keep your character very consistent and you won't get distracted by random parts of your character. If you have so many things that pop out, you don't really know what to focus on. So Kumori's color scheme has always been black and yellow. He was actually based off of an Umbreon to begin with. So I wanted to keep the yellows in his outfit design. And I kind of wanted to make them like highlights in parts of his outfit. I was gonna make his buckles pure gold, but that stood out way too much. So I muted all the buckles a bit. I then added a bit of a color difference in some parts of the boots just to differentiate some things. And then I spent an extremely long time making the perfect lines of the accentuations on his outfit. I had sketched an actual line for the bottom of the cloak, but the whole top part and back part of the cloak, I kind of was just winging. I redraw the same line a lot. So I actually went back and touched up his skin color. I had remembered his skin had used to be darker, so I tested that, but I still didn't like it. And then I changed his skin to be a bit more brown than yellow, just to match the whole black-brown concept going on. So that was all of the basic colors. I just started to shade next. So we'll just speed through so we can watch this happen.
first one done. I decided not to give his tail any of the highlights. It didn't make sense if I was going for a realistic fox. They don't have bright yellow ends of their tails. I could have given him some sort of white or something. Now that I think about it, which could have worked, but just the pure pitch black tail kind of fits him a little better. I also highlighted a bit more of the shadow ball off camera. All right, so here is Kumori then, and Kumori now. The next main two characters in this story were the twin bunny girls. The older sensible one is named Minasu. She was kind of like the team leader and the take no nonsense kind of gal. Her and her sister both control electricity. This is probably because they were heavily influenced by Plusle and Minin. Both Minasu and her sister were actually sent to our universe to find Kumori. He was a super evil bad guy in their world. They were sent to find him and I guess kill him. I don't really remember their goal very well. I know they didn't know it was him because he didn't have his memories so he also didn't know it was him and it was a fantasy world so it's not like they had a photograph of him that they could look at. Because Minasu's kind of whole team leader but rogue finder kind of thing, I decided she would work really well as a ranger. So I drew a basic pose for her and I also indicated the ears a little bit. And we're just gonna get right into me designing her. So first off, the hair. Her original hair was supposed to be like this crazy shoulder length uncontrollable mess, but I didn't ever draw it correctly. I knew what I was trying to draw, but I just couldn't do it correctly. So her hair was always much longer than I wanted it to be, and also not as messy as I wanted it to be. So I started off by giving her a bit of a messy hairstyle, this time definitely making it shoulder length, but also pretty poofy. The spiky hair kind of also represents her aggressive personality. Her sister has much straighter, long, flowy hair, and she has the big spiky mess. Next, I drew in her ears. Bunny ears are really fun to draw. I've gotten way better at it, for sure, than when I first started. I don't think I understood anything about how bunny ears work. So next, I was looking at some of the references that I had for other rangers, and they all had these shoulder pads going on and then some cloak or armor also. I didn't want her to be too armored up because she's not a close range fighter. So I gave her just a chest plate and the shoulder pads as well. I also decided to give her these arm gauntlets, kind of protect the forearms, but I kept her hands bare. I didn't give her any gloves. It felt more right for her not to have gloves so she can be more directly in contact with her electricity and also be less encumbered by things on her body. So I decided to give her some belts just to hold it all together more. I actually do this quite a lot. I give a lot of characters belts. It kind of helps hold the outfit together a little bit so there's not any empty space. I also like to think I was secretly influenced by all those Final Fantasy character designs I've seen where they're just covered in belts. But I've never played Final Fantasy, so I think it's just some sort of weird subconscious part of my brain that says, add belts. I then also gave her the front cloak thingy that Kumori had. It's a very common thing with fantasy characters to have this weird front thing going on. Also something I noticed from all the Fire Emblem I've played where every sword character has this thing going on. I kind of then gave her gauntlet boots with knee coverings. I made them wrap around her shoes, kind of like a cloth covering as well. Since she's a ranger, having more cloth-like parts than actual armor made more sense. I then gave her the long cape that a lot of rangers have, since she is more of a distance attacker anyway. And that was the final sketched version of Minasu's design. So 
Now I am going to ink it and we'll come back to color. All right, so again, I filled her in with a color I'm probably not going to use in her actual colors. And I already colored in her lightning coming from her hand. So I actually drew her sister first, which I didn't think of before I started recording. So you're gonna see me jumping back and forth between her sister's drawing and her, so you kind of get a little preview of the other one. But since they're twin sisters, I decided to match their skin and eye colors to be exactly the same. So I just color picked her sister's skin and eyes to be the same colors. I then color picked her sister's hair and then just made it blue so it could be the same hue. But it ended up being a much brighter blue and much more jarring than when it was red. So I muted the blue a little bit more. I then decided that maybe the blue was a little too dark. So I picked it and made it a little lighter again. I then started to color her outfit. I color picked the armor parts directly from her sister so they could match a little bit. So her shoulder plates and her chest plate and her armbands and whatnot are all going to be the same brown color. The rest of her outfit was more just her colors. Since she is a blue colored character, I picked a lighter blue color for her than a darker blue color. Even though she's more of a tougher character, there's a few other characters I had that had more darker colors in them and were also blue. So having her be the light blue color made more sense. Also the whole electricity thing, you kind of think more light colors as well. So I just colored in all the cloth parts of her in this lighter blue color. I then colored in her little bunny tail, which I almost forgot to even draw, but I didn't, so it is there. I then started thinking about the accents on her outfit. I went for a darker blue, it popped a bit more, and it also fit back to her tough character. The pattern on the front of her outfit is the same pattern that I drew on her sister's outfit, so I figured they should match there too. I then decided to color the back part of the cloak she's wearing completely dark blue. Because her whole outfit was the same blue color, it didn't really pop very well. So having the back be completely dark blue really helped bring her colors out more in the front. It helped differentiate her cloak from her body as well. I then continued the dark blue into the cloth parts on her boots as well. I didn't want to get rid of the light blue completely from the cloak, so I turn the light blue into the accent color on the back of the cloak so that it still had some unity with the front. Next was adding the accents onto her armor. I again used the same color that her sister has, which was this lighter brown color, and matched most of the accents to what her sister kind of looked like. And with that, I was done with the outfit colors. Next, I'm gonna start shading. Usually I pick a color that is representative of the mood of the piece I'm drawing. With these character designs, I decided to pick a color that is the character's color instead of the mood of the character. So with Kumori, I used a purple as the shading color, but with my Namasu, I'm using a blue. I 
because those are their colors. Now we're just gonna zoom on through this while I shade away. So I add a glow around her lightning and she is now completely done. And here is my Nasu then and here is her now. So since I showed the my Nasu drawing first, I actually showed them out of order because I drew her sister Purasu before her. So Purasu is also a bunny because she is twins with my Nasu, but she is more happy-go-lucky, excitable kind of character versus her sister's more matter-of-fact, bossy kind of character. So for this one, I drew a cute little pose for her where her lightning is gonna be shooting out her little fingers. So Parasu's hair, actually interesting. Like I had said before, I redrew these characters before and had redesigned them before, specifically had redesigned how I draw their hair before. So I kind of had an understanding of what I wanted to do for her hair. She always had this big middle bump going on that was kind of like her middle bangs, but it, it wasn't exactly that in the original drawings. It was just a bump. So I kept the bump thing, but hopefully by the time I ink it, you'll see that I kind of made it a little more readable as hair than just a tumor on her head. She has really long hair compared to her sister and it's much straighter and more flowy as well. So since the pose I drew is more in motion than the other two, I gave her hair a bit of a motion as well, styled it to the side and made it a bit wavy with the wind. So next I started to look at my references. For Purasu, I actually decided to go more with a druid class than her sister's ranger. It's still kind of nature-based like a ranger usually is, but this one is more in the healing side of things, which I think shows Purasu's friendly, happy nature more than a ranger would have. So looking at my references, they all have arm gauntlets of some type and they also are gloveless probably so they can control their nature magic better or whatnot. So I gave her gauntlets and kept her gloveless as well, which also matches her sister's design. I also gave her the shoulder things as well. I also gave her a belt, which I guess goes back to the whole belt thing I was talking about before, but again, it kind of adds something to the middle part of the character design, makes it so there isn't anything blank or empty there. I gave her the front middle cloaky thing as well. I then decided I didn't like the hood and completely erased it. I think originally I was going to have a cape kind of come off her shoulders, kind of like how the other two have had it, but then I decided I wanted it to be coming from the bottom half, kind of as if it was a skirt, which I thought fit her character way better than having a cape. She was one of the characters who had the skirt shirt combo instead of the pant shirt combo, so having something dress or skirt like made more sense for her. She's also way more girly than her sister is, so that also helped add to the skirt idea. I then shortened the front cloak thing completely. It was getting way too long. It kind of obscured her outfit away too much for me. Next, I kind of just re-outline her hands so I know how to draw them better later. I then had to rethink her top half now that she didn't have a cloak anymore. I still wanted her to have something around her neck, so I gave her turtleneck more so than a hood or cape kind of thing going on. So she's still different than her sister's outfit. 
I then indicated where the lightning was going to come from her fingers and indicated a bit of bumps on her arm gauntlets as well. Next was time to think about her shoes. When I am struggling for ideas, I tend to just redraw the same thing over and over and over again. So I drew over her legs again, just like I had drawn her hands because <laughs> I was struggling for ideas. I then redrew the front cloak thing again because the angle of it just was bothering me so much and it did not look correct. I deleted the whole thing and did it all again because I cannot make my mind up. After waving my pen around the screen uncontrollably because I have no idea what I want to be doing, I finally decided to give her shoes this bit of a cloth thing coming on them. So they're tied in the middle of the front of her shoe and they wrap around the bottom. It kind of went back to the whole nature-y thing and then later when I designed her sister it kind of fits them together a little more too. I then decided to give her knee pads and armory kind of boots and have them stop really high on her legs so they're like thigh high leg boots basically. <laughs> Next I realized I never drew her ears in because I am a dummy dumb so I had to resize her much smaller so I could fit her extremely large ears and went ahead and started to draw them in. I had a harder time with her ears than her sister's because Kurasu is in motion while my Nasu I just had kind of standing there so my Nasu Kurasu's ears were very straightforward because they weren't moving, but because Kurasu is moving, I wanted to have the ears kind of reflect her motion as well. At first, I kind of just drew them to fit her personality and then realized, oh no, they, they do need to be moving with her, so I uh, redrew them completely. <laughs> I definitely think they worked better when I started to include the motion of the pose with the ears instead of just having them be, you know, on her. Okay, with that, I finished the sketch of Kurasu. So I'm gonna line art it and then we'll come back for the colors. All right, so I filled her in with this dark blue color since she's not gonna have this exact dark blue on her most likely at all. I also drew her electricity coming out of her fingers already to get that over with. And now we're going to color her in. So her whole color thing is the, the bright red. When I used to draw her, I used to make her hair the brightest red on the color wheel you could possibly have. And now that is impossible for me to look at, especially when it's on a bright screen. Does not help at all. So instead, I picked a more muted red color, but one that is still very bright. The first one I picked was more muted, but I decided I did want it to have a bit more saturation, so I changed it. Next was the skin color. Her and her sister were always paler skinned, and I wanted to keep that. And I also kept their skin color more in the red range of skin tones. One, because Purasu's whole theme is red, but also because red is a bit more lively than browner or orange or yellower skin colors because it already kind of shows a bit of a blushy kind of look going on. Originally, the sisters had pitch black eyes. I think it was just the colored pencil I had at the time when I was drawing. But now when I color their eyes, I make it a bit more grayer than black, just so I have a range to shade it with, so it's not just a pitch black color. The inside of the ears was very interesting. At first I went for the brown that I had gone with Kumori for, but it didn't fit the whole peachy look of the whole character, so I swapped it to be much more skin flesh tone, and it definitely worked way better for this character. So now I went into coloring the clothes. I wanted to keep that red theme that she has always had, but since her hair is red and it is long, I was afraid that it would clash with her outfit if her outfit was also a straight red color. So in order to differentiate between her hair and her clothes, I decided to go pink for her clothes instead of straight red. This way it's in the same color family, but it is more noticeable when her long hair is behind her. Next, I 
color picked for the basic idea of the armor parts, but realized I wanted more lighter colors once again for these characters. So I lightened up the brown so it's not such a dark color on such a happy character. I then thought I went maybe too light, so I muted the armor color just a bit more. When I went into the boot she's wearing, I had a quite a hard time figuring out what colors I wanted to be what. At first I just colored the whole thing the same color, but I then kind of realized it didn't look right since I had parts that I had separated. I also decided to figure out the accent color on her outfit, which I went for a dark pink maroony plum color. I don't know what you would call this color, but it is the only really dark color on her outfit, which I think is a good accent to her whole outfit. Here's where I started making wild guesses at what I wanted the outfit to be. Here I put the darker color on the rest of the boots, but later I will realize I don't like this because this part of the boot is not cloth. So I just fill it back in with the same boot color. <laughs> I then made her pants accent color and decided her whole outfit was gonna be a bit darker. I wanted the bright pink to really pop out more and it was kind of just maybe too bright for me to look at really. So at first I was going to keep the bottom half completely pink and then accent it with the darker color. But after I had finished putting the accent on the whole thing, I suddenly realized it kind of looked like the top half and the bottom half were not connected in any way as if the bottom half was kind of just tied around her waist in some way. And I wanted it to be one piece, one complete outfit. So I filled the whole thing in the darker color and accented the whole thing with the lighter color. Later when I design her sister, it's kind of as if I swapped the dark and the lights. So even though their personalities aren't that way, where Purasu is the happy one more so than Minasu, the swap of the colors kind of connects the two characters a bit more. And personally, I kind of do like the darker colors as the main base color in general, just on most stuff. This is probably back to my eyes being the way they are. I think having a lighter color on top of a darker color instead of the darker color being on the lighter color really helps pop the design a bit more. There's something about light on dark versus dark on light that I just kind of prefer the light on dark. So now I go back into the legs where I still have no idea what I'm doing. I first tried to use the same color as the belt buckle, but I find it to be way too white, way too different from the brown I originally picked. So I then lighten it a little bit and then realize it's still way too light. So then I lighten it again, but I also want the knee pads to be very obviously different. So I keep the knee pads this white color, but turn the rest into the darker brown. So finally I decide that the top half is gonna be the darkest and then the bottom half is gonna be a little bit lighter, but not too light that it's just extremely noticeable, but light enough. I then play around with the knee pads a bit because I think they're a little too white still, but uh, I then give up and I'm just accepting that they're just gonna be really white knee pads. I then use that whitish color to do all the accents on the armor parts. And with that, I finished all of the colors. So I'm gonna go on into shading, which I use reds for because of her red theme. And we're gonna zoom on through this.
finish drawing Parasu. So here is her then, and here is her now. All right, I'm gonna end the first episode here. I have 12 characters in total that I redesigned out of the who knows how many characters I had to begin with. I'll be putting three characters in a video. So for this one, it was Kumori, Minasu, and Purasu, and then I will have three characters for other future videos coming up. I hope you enjoyed. This was really fun to do in general for myself. I thoroughly enjoy redesigning old stuff I've drawn because it's fun to look at and then fun to reimagine now that I know how to draw better. I like to think that redesigning it now is what little younger me was imagining it to look like back then, but now I am capable of actually creating what young me was seeing instead of whatever it was that I was doing then. Like and subscribe if you liked the video. Whatever the other things YouTubers say, bell, I don't know. If you want me to do other redesigning kind of videos, let me know what you want me to redesign. I'm gonna finish up all of the videos of my OCs, but if there's other stuff maybe I should take a crack at, let me know. Maybe you have old OCs. I don't know. Links are in my description to all of my social media and Discord channel as well. Thank you, have a good day. I am 